Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In doing the lunar landing recently, I had decided that we really need more Kerbals, and of course one way to get Kerbals, my favorite way to get Kerbals, is to rescue them. Let's not talk about how they got there, um, though current events might suggest a few things, but uh, uh, yeah, we need to uh, get some Kerbals, but remember that the links right now our small links does not have an EVA capable shell. In order to get an EVA capable shell, we need the next level up, these command modules, uh, and that has an EVA capable shell, and that fits this Lynx Neo spacecraft. The three person one does not have that gap, and I really need to fix that. But for now, I want to get this four person pod anyway, uh, that would be best. And that means unlocking the R&D building that is currently under construction. But we do have some upgrade points. Let me toss some in. I think the it's the VAB upgrade points that actually determine the speed of things, right? Now let's see, 107... 106, yeah. Let's say I just increase the second rate. Oh, it does, okay. I don't know how much I should be putting there versus here, but 96 days. Well, I mean, this will benefit us later anyway. I mean, all our missions are going to be pretty darn expensive right now. I think I'll just wait the 87 days for the R&D building to finish. We've got a Jupiter Orbiter mission on its way. We'll see if it can do the flyby. I don't know what kind of orbits around Earth, or in some cases the Moon, these Kerbals are going to be in. So that's there's a lot of different orbits that they could be in. And that could be a whole other pickle. Okay, close alarm. Close. Okay, so now we've got the new R&D building. And command modules, let's research this. We probably need a whole bunch of other stuff too. I would like these engines, somewhat throttling methane oxygen engines here. We don't have a whole lot to work with as far as these, that Denonicus isn't that good. It is a liquid methane engine. Actually, its vacuum ISP is really good, so maybe... Uh, there's high efficiency propulsion. It's true. So maybe that's a positive. But I remember needing a whole lot of stuff in this tier. Ooh, the claw. Hmm. And better station modules. We wanted the lab. The lab would be good. Oh, and better solar panels would be nice too. These aren't like the ultimate ones though. We want these. Well, the deep throttling, or reasonably throttling, methane oxygen engine will help. Though I really want a Hydrolox one. wonder where that's gone. <laughs> uh, I'll have to check that. But okay, let's get that. I think we want the lab and these labs. And I think it'd be good to have better solar panels. Maybe the radiator would even work. All right, that's our science shopping list. We have reached one science per day. Okay, so 1.05 science per day. That'll give us 32 days to build something for that window if we need to. Okay, I'm just going to handle that Jupiter Orbiter maneuver. Ah, it's just a mid-course correction. Well, we'll do that quickly. Um, we need the command module tech. I think we should try out the full Lynx and try to use it to rescue some Kerbals. Alright, here we are with this correction maneuver, but I'm not thrilled with the comms. We seem to be in the red there. 23%. And where are we? Well, I guess we're pretty... no, not really. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's a cause for worry that we're at 23% here. Now, I used the planner. I used the planner. But maybe we need some more buffer. I should probably plan the antenna for Saturn levels or something like that. And that would be better. But anyway. We'll see if it works anyway. So, here we go. Okay, we definitely want a periapsis. That's more tilted than I was expecting. Okay. Sort of sideways to some, but we'll get enough power, I think. One way or another, we're going to get power. Alright. So, we are just going to meet up with it once it gets to Jupiter. Currently we have a 10,000 kilometer periapsis. It looks reasonably in line with some moons per... Uh, close, close, not horrible. And when it gets to the SOI, we'll take a look at it. But that's going to be a long ways off, and I'm worried about its comms. So, maybe we'll launch another one. But with better comms. Alright, let me see here. I mean, it says it's alright, but let's say Saturn. Okay, well, no connection from Saturn. I, I don't want that. I want connection. So, right now, this is certifying this all the way to Saturn. We have to nerf these comms back down, but they, I just increased the tech level to where we would be at in this year, so... So, it is like this, I guess, but... No, that's not a huge bit rate. Maybe I can do a little bit more. I want a kilobyte. A kilobit. No, I'll take a kilobit. Alright. Fine. So, that doesn't increase the power requirements too much. Of course, these are not getting much at Saturn if we chose to send it there. Not bad bad. Not impossible. Well, let's get some days elapsed here. But yeah, let's make it Saturn capable too while we're at it, maybe. It's probably overdoing it as it is. Okay, well, this will be Jupiter Orbiter 2. We aren't packing a whole lot on it. We've got the usual instruments. But I'd really like to send a scanner, of course. But first, we need to get there safely first. No, that's the first thing. So, we'll build two. And then the backup. If it turns out we don't need it, we'll send to Saturn or something. Next thing after that, I need to look at getting science data from the surface of Mars. So we need a Mars lander that works. Okay, so as an attempt at a Mars lander, and let's call this Mars lander now, uh, I've got this. It's sort of flattish. It's about one ton. I've reduced the ablator on here. Uh, we've got the little shielded tank in between that one. Uh, just the procedural shielded tank in between the actual fuel tank and the heat shield, just in case. We've got two drug shoots, two main shoots. For the drug shoots, I've got target altitude 20 kilometers. I don't know what would be best, but let's go with that. And wanted speed 80, use parachutes 2, pre-deployment 8 kilometers, deployment 5 kilometers. And then for the main shoots, Kevlar. Oh, it should be Kevlar. I said Kevlar. Okay, the drogue shoots. Just make sure. Apply. Apply. Okay, then the main shoots, Kevlar, Mars, on a touchdown speed 6, and 2000, 1000. Apply. Apply. Okay, so in theory. In theory, it's okay. And then we have solar panels down here. These are only for a little bit, but really 69 watts a piece. Well, okay. 30, so let's say 24 watts a piece. For a little while, it'll be okay. We just need to be able to transmit information from the surface. This will be with it until it hits the atmosphere, basically. And that is the goal. So, let's see if it works. It only takes 21 days to build it these days. So, I'm gonna build two. Alright, so we've gotten the Jupiter Orbiter's done, the Mars Lander's done, and even got the Command Module technology done. So we've got the larger... Well, I haven't unlocked the larger version of the Lynx yet, but we've gotten the technology for it. 
and I've decided to swap out the transfer window planner that I had for the fork of it that actually gives the ejection longitude of ascending node because that'll be easier for us uh, and we'll have a pure prograde component instead of whatever the heck the other transfer window planner was trying to do and since we've had some problems with it so uh, you'll find this fork in CCAN and uh, the difference is when we hover over the alarm for Jupiter here uh, there's this one that doesn't give an ejection longitude of ascending node and this one you can see in that list of stuff that there is an ejection longitude of ascending node and that will give us uh, the timing for the launch and actually I don't want the insertion so I'm going to go with no insertion burn and I get, I'm gonna get rid of the old one all right well the sun is just about setting on us the stated ejection longitude of ascending node there is 289 degrees and we're at 285 so we'll be launching in the dark basically um, I, I guess I don't have to get too much more accurate than this uh, well okay we'll go now SAS on throttle is up so this is a Jupiter orbiter mission ignition and launch it's possible as we get higher up we'll get some glimmer of sun. So we're just doing these launches for Jupiter and we built the four missions mainly to wait for the command module technology. It's still my intention to mainly focus on crewed missions and to do that we're going to be rescuing some Kerbals so that we have more victims. I mean Kerbals. Uh, so yeah, that is the plan. Nice hues on the horizon. All right, a little spot of sun there. I don't have all the fancy visual enhancements here, like uh, RSS Reborn or anything. So this is how it is with RSS. I, mean, I do have RSS visual enhancements, but uh, just a regular version. Basically, right at the stated ejection longitude of ascending node there. Close enough. I'd quit and then come back in and I think it's gotten the alarms wrong. Let me double check. Okay, well, I was doing more transfer window plan stuff. Separate and ignition. All right, that's good. And fairings. Okay, and up a bit lopsided because of a minor mistake there, but uh, 260 by 167. And let's plot for Jupiter. Okay, ASAP. Create node. All right, so 6,400. We have 9,800 altogether, counting all stages. So we'll have 3,400 after the burn, which is plenty to do Jupiter things. Plenty. Let me go ahead and let's get it set up and extend some solar panels. Okay, ignition. And we have two of them. Okay, burn part one successful, burn part two. With five of these uh, one kilonewton thrusters. Okay, and finally the probe itself needs to contribute. With three one kilonewton thrusters. <laughs> well. There we are. And here the RCS is puffing because something's imbalanced. Okay, well, orbit's coming in. As usual, it's not quite right, so a mid-course adjustment or correction will be necessary. And I'll take that for now. Well, that doesn't look great. Okay, so can't correct all of it there. Well, we'll capture like that, and then after we capture, do a correction to tilt a little bit better for intercept of the moons. But that should do the trick. So that mid-course correction is in there, and I don't think I need to send the other Jupiter orbiter this time. We can reserve it just in case we want to use it for Saturn or something. Alright, so we need to get the 
crew module cooking and make sure to test that properly. Let's see about that. Okay, so unlike RP1, or even I think to some extent RP0, we don't have any sort of uh, benefit from unlocking the Lynx S Neo for unlocking the Lynx Neo. In other words, uh, sometimes in RP1, when you have a previous variant of something, the next variant gets cheaper, but I haven't figured out how to do that. So uh, I'm just going to pay the cost, 147000 uh, to be honest, for crew pods, that's probably not wrong anyway, that we would probably have to start from scratch. Where the heck did it go? Probably down here somewhere. And we also have to unlock the shell, and the arrow cap is probably the same, actually, I think. Let me see. So, typing in links. Uh, nope, it has its own arrow cap. It's a different form factor. And heat shield as well. 80,000 for that. So it's an expensive upgrade. Uh, now we have a properly EVA capable shell as well. And it's nice and wide. So hopefully it'll be even easier to come back from the moon and it won't like heat up so much. Okay, there's that, and let's get the docking port back on. Maybe we can avoid it from blowing up, maybe we can't, I don't know. <laughs> and then this nose cap that we use. There is a launch escape system for Lynx, I just haven't added it. I don't think we need these now. Uh, those were meant to be backup thrusters in case, well, okay. Well, I've turned off, oh scrap. So I don't think I need the backup thrusters in case these fail, I think. <laughs> so we'll leave those off. I'll put a couple of extra batteries, just for the heck of it. Just two. But the era of O scrap mess messing, up, messing us up is over. So I'm using the same service module. We're at 60% utilization there. So, hopefully this is going to be okay. Now I have to adjust the rocket for it. I made a buzz light. <laughs> Sounds like some sort of beer, actually, but uh, we'll optimize it a little bit better. Actually, I think I'll retain the buzz light for the moon missions, for the moon rescue. And I've extended the core a little bit, and what we have is a Hydrolox core with seven of the Hydrolox engines at the bottom here instead of what we previously had which was four and but it's the same diameter as the full buzz we just don't have the boosters and I don't know if that's a good thing or not a Hydrolox core without boosters seems wrong but uh, well here it is it's the same diameter in fact I had set for the buzz the diameter of the core was always 8.4 meters for the, it's the same as SLS and the diameter of the second stage was 6.6, .6, which is the diameter of S4B. So, yeah, it was always sort of uh, in homage to other rockets. But 1.32 thrust weight ratio at the start. Feels like it could use boosters. It still takes an obscene amount of time to build it. So that's not great. I'm going to set that aside for now and work on the lower orbit one. We don't want to send the, the one all the way out to the moon just yet before we test it out on low Earth orbit. So let me do the low Earth orbit one and see how I can optimize that a little bit. Probably we won't need so much in the service module. I don't even know if there's enough in the service module for a whole rescue around the moon. Uh, we'll need 800 capture, 800 to come back. That leaves us with... Uh, maybe 600 to work with and that's assuming that these two stages can actually get to the moon which right now they're a little bit short so it's a question mark thing right now but anyway let me do the leo one first all right well i've decided to go with a 5.4 meter form factor for the leo version and that's mainly because we can't make it too much tighter with those two engines like that and i probably still need two engines there I've made the first stage Methalox, and we're using the same engines on the boosters for the Buzz rocket. And yeah, 
We probably don't need quite that much overall, uh, certainly in the service module, but I don't actually know where the heck we're going to be rescuing them from. They could be in Leo, they could be not in Leo. So just to be careful about that, I'm going to keep it fully fueled. And we might need to get to a bunch of them. Uh, so that's another consideration. Now, uh, I do have stage recovery in here. And so I have slapped some parachutes on the first stage and we're going with the helicopter recovery style. Well, I'm not going to personally do it, but uh, that's what stage recovery is for. And so we'll see how that works out. But I, uh, we've got reusability. <laughs> Let's not talk about it too much, okay? Uh, so yeah, I have to test it out anyway because other people might do it. So yeah, we've got stage recovery for the first stage and we'll see what happens on that. We don't need the parachute sitting there. Yeah. All right, so this is not the buzz anymore at all. Uh, the, uh, the upper stage is, but not really, because it's made smaller, it's just the same engines. So, calling it Collins we mean, it doesn't go to the moon. Mm, Glenn is sort of already taken. Uh, we'll call it the Carpenter rocket. <laughs> Scott Carpenter, fine. Links on the Carpenter rocket. So I'm going to build one of these. But it's got to be a bit, 278 days. We're going to get to the Mars window first. So with that, let's launch one of the Mars landers and see how that works out. All right, we're ready to go for Mars. It's at ejection longitude of ascending node 48 degrees, and we're at 48 degrees. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Off it goes. Okay, high G-force. And staging. And we have two little Hydrolox engines. And fairings. We will need some of this stage to get us over to Mars, of course. But we're not expecting a capture. We're just going for direct descent. Okay, shut down, still a little bit lopsided, but we've got 3,000 left in this stage, and then certainly enough to get to Mars altogether. Alright, we have a transfer 3,800 meters per second over there. Not impossible that we would be able to capture, but again, not part of the plan. Alright, here we go. Ignition. Alright, and staging. Here's a little stage with the five one kill newton thrusters again. Okay, let's see if an orbit comes in or not. Okay, not. <laughs> okay. Well, there's still a chance there. Okay. Just needed a little bit more juice. I think I'll just do a correction in Mars SOI for that. And we'll probably have to do one anyway to make sure that we're on the side with comms. For now, I'll leave it polar. And then I'll adjust it when we get there. Okay, so that is... A potential Mars lander on its way and we will see if that works out and I won't send the other one because well this one's on its way we'll see what it does we have plenty of time and if it doesn't work we will alter the second one to make sure that it does work uh, but for now let's get this in daylight well, even though it's not ideally situated to get power this will be plenty enough power for it along the way and yeah so with that we have a probe on its way to Jupiter uh, and a probe on its way to Mars to land on it and we've got a new crew vessel under construction that's supposed to rescue Kerbals. So with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.